So for part B, use an ANOVA with an alpha of 0.05 to determine whether there are any significant differences among the three treatment means. I've set up an ANOVA summary table. The question doesn't explicitly ask for one, but this organizes the information quite nicely. And so I do highly recommend that you create one. So we've got the different sources here. We have a column for our sum of squares, our degrees of freedom, our mean square. We could technically calculate that mean square total, but we wouldn't use it for anything, so don't waste your time calculating it. And then we've got our F statistic that we'll calculate here. I often find it easiest to start with the degrees of freedom, so that's where I'm going to go. Degrees of freedom between is equal to k minus 1, where k is the number of groups. We've got three treatments here. So the degrees of freedom between is 2. Degrees of freedom total is big N minus 1. And that is given to us, plus we also can count it through. We've got four participants per condition. We've got three conditions, and that is 12. So 12 minus 1, the degrees of freedom here is 11. There are various ways of calculating the degrees of freedom within. We could take the degrees of freedom 1 plus degrees of freedom 2 plus degrees of freedom 3 and add them up. Or we can just realize that it's degrees of freedom total minus degrees of freedom between, which means that it is 11 minus 2, which is 9. So we get the same answer, which is good. We should get the same answer. So we've got our degrees of freedom. Next, we'll do the sum of squares, because without the sum of squares, we can't get the mean square. And without the mean square, we can't get the f. So let's sum, start with the sum of squares within. The sum of squares within is equal to the sum of squares 1 plus the sum of squares 2 plus the sum of squares 3. Those values were given to us, 2 plus 4 plus 8, and that's 14. I'm going to need more space before we're done. Um, next, we can do sum of squares total. The sum of squares total, the formula is the sum of x squared. So that's take each x, square it, and add it up. We are given all of the raw data, so we could calculate that by hand. But that's also given to us in the question, so we're not going to waste our time calculating it by hand. Subtract big G squared. That's the, uh, the grand total, so the sum of all x's, divided by n. And we're given each of these values. So this is 238 subtract 48 squared divided by 12. That's 2304 divided by 12. Yes, show as much work as you can. You're doing the steps anyways. Write it out. That way, if you make a mistake, your instructor can see where your mistake is and figure out what you did, and that's easier for them to grade and give you part marks. 238, subtract 192, which is 46. So we can put that right up here. I'm gonna move this out of the way, but I'm gonna come back to that summary table. So, the sum of squares between, well, there's an easy way to calculate it and there's a harder way to calculate it. And just so you have an example of the harder way, because sometimes you have to use the harder way, I'm going to do it both. So sum of squares between is sum of squares total, subtract sum of squares within. Sum of squares total, we just calculated, was 46. 
and sum of squares within we calculated and it was 14. So there is our answer, 32. And I'll go ahead and I'll fill that in. But now I'm gonna calculate it a different way because this is a useful formula to know. And we're gonna get 32 because we're calculating the same value. The formula is the sum of, of t squared divided by n. So you take each t, you square it, you divide by n, and you add it up. So we'll do that three times because we have three groups. Subtract g squared divided by big N. So t1 was 16. We're going to square it and we're going to divide by 4. Plus t2 was 8. We're going to square that and divide by 4. Plus t3 was 24. We're going to square that and divide by 4. Then we're going to subtract g squared, which was 48, squared, divide by 12, which we, all, we, we already know that that is 192 because we calculated this piece for sum of squares total. So this is 256 divided by 4 plus 64 divided by 4 plus 576 divided by 4, subtract 2,304 divided by 12. This is 64 plus 16 plus 144, subtract 192. That's 224 subtract 192, which is 32. The same answer we got up here, the easy way. But sometimes you, need, you don't have the information you need to calculate, say, the sum of squares within. So you can calculate the sum of squares total. But if you don't have sum of squares within, you need to use this value, this, this formula. And then once you have sum of squares total and sum of squares between, you can calculate sum of squares within. So there are times you're going to have to use this formula. Next up, we're going to calculate mean square between, which is sum of squares between divided by degrees of freedom between. So 32 divided by 2, which is 16. I'm going to bring back my ANOVA summary table, plug that right in, okay? So what I did was I did 32 divided by 2, and now for sum of squares within, I'm going to take 14 and divide it by 9, but I'm going to show my work, right, people? So mean square within equals sum of squares within divided by degrees of freedom within. So that was 14 divided by 9, which isn't a pretty number. It's 1.56. We'll put that in our table. Nice and handy to have everything organized. Now we're going to calculate our F, which is the mean square between divided by the mean square within. So that's 16 divided by 1.56, which is equal to 10.26. All of this is step three of the hypothesis testing procedure. I forgot to do the other pieces, so I'm going to go back and do them now. Step one is to state your hypotheses. The null, HO, is that all of the population values, all of the means, are equal to each other. The alternate is that at least one of these differs. 
We can't write it out like this though, because we'd have to write too many versions. So at least one knee is different. Step two, which I skipped, is that we need to find our critical value. To find our critical value, we did have to do part of step three. We need to know our degrees of freedom between and our degrees of freedom within. So our degrees of freedom between is two and our degrees of freedom within is nine. Our alpha is 0.05. And so what we're gonna do so we're going to go to the back of our book, to the, the F distribution, okay, right here. Our degrees of freedom was two, so degrees of freedom in the numerator, two degrees of freedom in the denominator was nine. So our critical value uh, in the lower or the regular font, that's alpha is 0.05. In the bold, that is alpha is 0.01. Our alpha was 0.05, it's 4.26. Though we'll see, because our F value that we calculated, that I forgot to write out, it was 10.26. So technically, our conclusion in step four will not depend upon whether or not we use a alpha of 0.05 or an alpha of 0.01. So our critical value with an alpha of 0.05 is 4.26. So if I come back here, I should have put 10.26, got distracted. So now for step four, what we need to do is compare our critical value to the value that we calculated, um, our F statistics. So our calculated value is 10.26, and that is larger than 4.26. So we're going to reject the null and accept the alternate. There is a significant treatment effect. And our evidence is that 10.26 is larger than um, 4.26. The F distribution is not a normal curve. It looks a little bit different. Um, kind of like this. It's a little bit harder for me to wing. Our critical value is here. And the value we calculated is somewhere out here. Out here is our critical region. So the value we calculated is in the critical region, which means we reject the null, we accept the alternate. There is a significant treatment effect. What we can't tell is where that effect is. We can't tell if treatment one differs from treatment two, treatment one differs from treatment three, or treatment two differs from treatment three. At least one of those comparisons is significant, but without post hoc tests, we can't calculate that through. We can't figure that out. We can just say that there is a difference. At least one of the means differs 